Hey guys, welcome to the updated series of Druid POVs with commentary. Today we are going to take a closer look at some Sabir gameplay. After you watch the video, please let me know in the comments how do you like the new format and leave any suggestions that you might have. Just a small disclaimer before we start. You have to remember that there are multiple ways of playing Druid. Every group is different, so always remember to adjust to your group level and needs. This is a commentary of my gameplay with some explanations of possible build choices. The footage that you will see in the series will usually be from solo heal scenario in advanced study runs, as the main goal of this series is to maybe help you take your Druid gameplay to a more advanced level. Alright, let's get into it. Sabir is a CC heavy fight, so you will be expected to contribute a lot of CC here. Another thing to remember is that your squad will frequently gain violent current stacks. Each stack increases incoming damage by 5%, which means that every time your squad member has a special action key, they are also taking 25% more damage. This is why it's extremely important to upkeep high protection uptime and just keep on healing. As I mentioned, this is ACC heavy fight, that's why I'm running Maximanship trade line for a moment of clarity, for 50% more CC from dazes and stuns. And then you also have a Clarion Bond here, which will cast Lesser War on 5 when you swap pets. And the last trait is kinda whatever, I'm running this one for Opening Strike, which will apply vulnerability on the boss, but if you want to roleplay as a DPS player, you can also run a Predator's Onslaught for some more damage on the boss. Second trait line is obviously Nature's Magic, and here I'm taking Windborne Notes for uh, extra regen on my Warhorn skills, and uh, Invigorating Bond for more protection and vigor. And then in Druid trait line we have Blood Moon for days when you enter CA, Verdon Leching for um, protection from glyphs, and of course Grace of the Land for Alacrity. For my heal skill I am taking Heal Glyph, but you can swap it to Healing Spring if you need more uh, cleanses in the last phase. Sun Spirit for Might, Glyph of Equality for CC and protection with Verdon Etching. A stone Spirit for Protection and Ages, and the Glyph of the Stars mostly for Emergency res, but you can also use it as a Condi Cleanse in the last phase. I also take two CC pads, Gazelle and Electric Wyvern. For gear I am running my High Toughness set, which is a combination of uh, Givers and Minstrels. I am also running uh, Mesmeroons for extra CC, but only take them if you are confident in your squad or if you have fast phases and not so much pressure, or if you are double healing, if you don't feel confident, then take uh, Monk Runes instead for extra healing. I also have Mystical Infusions here for extra concentration because of uh, Mesmer Runes. As for Sigils, I am running Concentration and Paralyzation. Uh, again, if you don't run Mesmer Runes, you don't need Concentration Sigil, you can just go with Transference. And for Relic, I am running Relic of the Monk for extra healing. Alright, let's get the fight started. I do a pretty standard opener, I start with uh, Warhorn 4 that applies vulnerability to the boss, then Warhorn 5 for boons, Sun Spirit for might, and then I enter CA, CA4 and CA2, CA2 is an instacast, Stone Spirit for protection, then CA5 for might and alacrity, and you can see that I'm not swapping my pets yet for Clarion Bond because I want to use them both for CC. If I swap them now, then the pet swap would not be off cooldown for CC. Normally after CA5 I would leave CA, but I'm looking at boss's health bar and I can see that we are going to enter CC phase soon, so I decide to stay in CA longer so I can CC with CA3. And now it's time to unleash all your CC skills, CA3, pets F2, special action key, glyph of equality, another special action key, work on 5, and here you have to be ready to heal up everyone after the bomb explosion. At the end of the phase, Sabir will do a knockback, which you can Aegis with Stone Spirit or stab with a Quality Glyph. During the jumping phase, don't forget to reapply boons, especially Swiftness with your Warhorn 5 and uh, Pet Swap. Use your CCs to break the Wisp fast. You can use your Staff 5 to block projectiles. On the last platform, check if your team has protection, and if not, try to reapply it as soon as possible before going to the main platform, and try to be in C4 to heal through uh, Sabir's auto attacks. We're going to have a shockwave soon. If you have any violent current stacks in you, and you touch one of the little tornadoes, 
All of your stacks get removed, but you also cause the tornado to send out waves of electricity that apply a weakness to your allies. So it's better to use your special action key to jump over the wave, or use it to port to tornadoes to lose all the stacks before you touch them. And now we have another CC phase, so just unleash all of your CCs, don't forget to heal in the meantime. Pay attention to all the people around you, if someone is low on health then make sure to heal them up. I don't have stone spirit up for ages, but equality glyph is up, so I give my team stability for the knockback. Don't forget to swap pets for swiftness, use your CCs. Check for protection and try to be safe for a while running up to the boss. Reapply might and get ready for the shockwave. Now get your special action keys, CC the boss. Make sure again that everyone has protection before we spread out with the bombs and be ready to burst heal everyone right after the bombs. And now just keep healing, keep giving booms and kill the boss. I'm trying to use my staff 5 to reflect the projectiles uh, from wisps, so I'm placing my staff 5 between the wisp and the group, and this is especially important in CM when you have wisps on the platform. Again, unleash all of your CCs. With this setup you should be able to do around 2k break bar damage in each break bar, but that of course depends on your squad. If they are doing a lot of CC then of course you will do less. And if they are not, then of course you will do more. In any case, you should be aiming to be at the top of the CC meter. And there we go, the boss is dead. And now you can look at the fight again without me talking. Bye! Is on the